I'm so looking forward to today's um, episode with Linda Thackeray. I, um, I met Linda in 2019 and that actually really surprised me, Linda, because I had to go back through my calendar to see when I did meet you. It feels like I've known you forever yep. and I'm surprised that it was only 2019 and I met Linda I was studying um, psychosomatic therapy and Linda was one of the course instructors, the facilitators, and we just, um, we connected instantly and I was, and still am, um, and I probably, I may not have shared this with you, Linda, but just in awe about how much you know about the mind and the body connection and why people do what they do and um, so I'm completely in awe and I really wanted to um, as a course I just wanted to pick your brains and just know more I wanted to be inside your mind and how you know and do things um, and that doesn't happen to me often with with course instructors I really felt very seen very heard and the beautiful thing from there is that we formed this lovely friendship which um, I'm just love so I I want to chat with you today Linda about you know how you do life um, personally but also Linda has a really really interesting business she's made huge transitions in her life um, she's moved from senior corporate roles and is running her own business as the face and body interpreter and that just fascinates me so Linda welcome 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 um thank you for such a beautiful introduction <laughs> oh, oh do you know what I'm just um I love just I, I love the form the friendship that we formed I really love that um for our listeners I mean I could be here uh, I've set my timer actually I haven't set the timer I'm about to set the timer um because I could chat with you forever um, but we won't. So um, what would be great to start with, Linda, is if you just give us a snapshot of like a little bit about you and maybe where you're at in life. Thank you. Um, well, I guess because you introduced my background, yeah, yeah. maybe I could just tell you a little bit about how I ended up doing Perfect. psychosomatics. Perfect. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been really blessed within my working life right from my very first job. And, you know, I went to uni, the, the subject that I was most interested in was psychology. Yeah. And didn't really have at that stage um, a real idea of what I wanted to do, but psychology was the one subject that jumped out. And my world ended up taking a very different path. I ended up being a secretary. Oh my and, God, that's no wonder. I didn't know that. Yeah, my first Same. job was Same. as a secretary. Yeah. <laughs> And I had a had a manager at the time. He was the managing director of a national distribution company. And about three months in, he actually asked me, he called me into his office and said, I need to ask you a question. Oh. Whose job in the company are you after? And if it's mine, then I'll be well and truly retired. So I want you to think about the answer to that and let me know. Oh, my gosh. I've so, got so I just said at the time, you know, I want to be general manager. Yeah. So they put me on a management training program and I had five different jobs within the next five years. Yeah. But then they sold to an overseas company. And when I questioned where I now um, was in the organization with the change of management, it didn't quite feel aligned. Oh. So I had a competitor at the time and they sent me a job, a job ad and uh, asked me if I would apply for this job, which I was like, well, actually, I'm really happy where I am. And it wasn't until I'd had those discussions that I decided to actually apply for the job. So I applied for the job as um, basically setting up an Australian distribution company for an American company. Oh, wow. And then that sort of set me on a career path, working with them for many years. I became their general manager about 10 years after the time I'd, I had the conversation with wow. the MD of the previous company. But throughout that training, I had, I had always really um, been incredibly 
invested with like more of the relationship side, the people side. And that was the area that really inspired me the most. So my customers internationally were, it was more about them rather than the products that I sold. Uh, yes. Yeah. And um, I was very, op I had the opportunity of doing like many classes, workshops um, in between all of that. And they really helped me form the basis of like what I actually do now in terms of my work life. And psychosomatics has been just such a life-changing experience for me. Yeah. I had my first reading when I was in 2008. Yeah. And it was profound to have an experience of being seen by someone who didn't know me and who knew more information than most of the people that um, I would, you know, meet yeah. um, along the way. Yeah. And Can I just stop you there for a second? Yeah. Because I, I know psychosomatics. I, our, our listeners probably don't, so I might just rewind you in a sec about that. But I can, I can see such parallels in our paths that I um, started as a secretary. My path was different because my boss said to me, he, he wanted to get rid of me because I was full of attitude and I went <laughs> down. But, but that was a real blessing because that got me into training and yeah. coaching and consultancy and that was my life path and I'm just as I'm listening to your story the events that unfold yes. are part of our life path aren't they that the they're you may. yes and opportunities yeah. that are open yeah. to us and sometimes at the time we don't realize um, the magnitude so uh, I just want to do a little um, pause there but psychosomatics what what is that what what, what is it? Because you said you had your first reading and it was really profound. What does that mean? What, what does it look like? Sure. So the, re the style of reading I had, because there's many in psychosomatics, yeah, yeah. but the style that I had was a face reading. Yeah, right. On. And um, in the face reading, they, we basically take a photo of somebody's face, yeah. mirror image, two right faces, mirror image, two left faces, yeah. and then you get introduced to the two sides of your personality oh, and the right hand side of the face is how you present to the outside world the left hand side is what's really happening on the inside oh wow and it's like the right brain left brain connection so to say that I was somewhat mortified with my first reading is possibly an understatement wow I signed up to the full training without knowing a great deal about it. But at the time when I looked at my photos, my right-hand side was presenting, you know, really happy, um, like I had, you know, everything together, yeah. incredibly confident. Yeah. But my left-hand side was having a very different experience and she just looked trained, exhausted, yeah. somewhat haggard, about 15 years apart. Yeah. And I had never noticed the asymmetrical nature of my face. Wow. So what I didn't know at that time was how, how much that changes as you start to really get to know what's happening to the inner self and why there is a need to create a mask to make it present to the outside world that everything's fine when on the inside it's not fine. It's not fine. And do you know what? I think a lot of the listeners would really relate to that and be really intrigued that we can get that insight. Like, like you said, when you had your first reading, yeah. that it was as though the person knew things about you yeah. that, that you hadn't kind of shared, like almost like reading, getting inside your mind and your secret thoughts. And isn't the power in being able to see that through our physical form yeah and Catherine I think it's as well the ability to see things from like where they've actually come from yeah, yeah. so I had some markers on my face that indicated that I was still carrying some of my childhood um I'm going to use the word trauma yeah, yeah but things that had happened in childhood that then showed up in behavioral patterns that could be read in my face and Ooh, what were some of those? Do you remember what those? Of course, you yeah, do, absolutely. But what were those markers? Because some of the listeners, this will be completely new um, concepts yeah. for them. So, what were some of the the markers there? So the main mark. Well, there's there was two main markers. Yeah. The first one was the difference between some of my features 
between the right and the left, yeah. but particularly my ears. They were of oh, different wow. heights, indicating yeah. different priorities. And then the attitudes showed up with how I felt the need to present a completely different aspect of myself to what was happening. So that only comes with um, over time. It's not yes. something that, you know, one morning you wake up yeah. and just decide you're going to be a different, a different style of being. Yes. And because it showed everywhere within how I was presenting, not just in one part of my face, my faces, Catherine, was so different wow. that they look like they look like complete strangers. Do you know what I I I I I know this, Lynn, because I've been through the training with you. Yes. And I recall, so for, for the, the listeners, what what um happens is that there's a photo taken and there's an app that um that is used to merge the um the sides of the face. And it, it shows, like Linda just said, it was like there was two distinctly different parts to her. And I've had that same series of photos taken of my face and over time so when I was first exposed to psychosomatic therapy was probably four only four years ago again it feels like a lifetime um, but my features have changed a lot and they've changed um, uh, the same as you Linda the right side of my face was quite smooth and clear and that was the the bit that I presented to the outside world about, you know, getting stuff done, very capable, appeared to be very confident. Um, and there's, there appeared to be a strength in that side of my face. When I looked at the left-hand side of my face, and I'll probably do it now, I cried. I cried. I cried for that person because she was hurting. Yeah. And I saw it in my feet. I, I saw it, the power of the... The, the face readings and having the photographs is to see to see it in you know mirrored back to you and it really um I was fuck sorry I wasn't gonna I, I, you know what I do it I remember that I remember in that training where I had that taken because that's the first time I had had that photo that merged photo taken and I was just so sad for that part of me um, but like you said, too, it then gave me um, some insight and tools to be able to, to work on those elements and to help. So the, the photos since then, there has been more of a merging, but even over time, she's different. That chick, that right and left photos are very different because it's reflecting on what's happening for me at the yeah. time. Yeah. And I often say... A couple of things when photos appear the way that yours and mine both yeah. did yeah. is the two the two common things that show up for me yeah. is other people see us as being yes. really confident. And I'm, yes. when I say us, I'm talking about what before before we started doing this work. But on the inside, we're not seeing ourselves in the same light. Yeah. And we should probably mention as well, when you meet and greet people, Yes. The majority of people only see the right-hand side of the face. They don't actually oh. see the left-hand side. So when they are saying they're seeing a larger right, or right face, they're seeing that strong, confident personality. Wow. So when, wow. We, wow. Yeah. when we don't feel strong and confident, and as people tell us that we're really confident, it can actually feel like we're not seen. Yes. Whereas in fact, whereas in fact, we have not actually quite got to that same level of understanding about the capacity. Because when you actually go and do things and you show up, maybe in the workplace or, you know, particularly with, when I say workplace because it's action orientated, it's the right hand side. When you actually show up, you show up well. But just behind the scenes is that doubt about the ability to show up. So what can change when you start to start to recognize the strength of that right hand side is the fact that that is you showing up. Um, and when you let go of the need to have a mask, it's yes. like the side that's quite protective of the feminine side, yes. which is the left side, learns how to step back so that the feminine energy can step forward. 
And so instead of one side protecting another, yeah. um, it's like they both walk together. Oh my gosh, you have just um, described my life <laughs> in that because very, very capable. And both you and I, we have had similar, same, same, but different experiences in life and, and similar paths have been very successful in our respective um, careers and businesses. Yeah. And, and I quite often question myself, uh, like doubt myself and what I, my inner talk has been is what are people seeing? Because I don't see that. Like, yeah. what are they, they seeing? And that real um, confusion, but then having done more work on myself about seeing the strength within myself, I can absolutely see the right and the left sides coming. I don't think they're quite there, but they're certainly um, coming together. Yeah. Yeah, you're actually looking really balanced, Catherine. Do you know what I was thinking? I want to, um, uh, what we might do, Linda, it, not now, um, but I might do an updated photo because I haven't done that for... Would love oh, that. That would be so cool. And then we can, um, yeah, that would be just so cool. That would be so cool. So why don't you, why don't you now, I'm just going to take my glasses off and we'll see how we go for the listeners because Linda and I are here together Um online and we can see each other and but the podcast is audio so we're going to see whether we can um, bring this to the the listeners but I'm going to take my glasses off and Linda I would love for you to do a quick mini um, reading of my features so Linda's looking at my face um, I'm looking in the camera and she'll do that bit of a um a reading and then I'm going to ask her the what but what she was actually the process as well so you're testing you're testing my ability to do what I ask my students to do (laughs) okay so this is um as I look at your face yeah which has changed from when I first knew you you were more structured and more of a rectangular face when I saw you first so true so true and what I notice is that your face is more oval even though there's the structure is still there so the oval basically means that you are open-minded flexible very concerned about the emotional side of um how you respond to the world yes and by letting go of the structure, you've actually let go of some of the more fixed ways and th- how things may need to be. So very much more go with the flow. Yeah, so true. So the, true. The vibrancy of your face speaks of how well you're actually enjoying the different zones. So in your mental zone, which is the forehead, yeah. really bright, really vibrant, good healthy tissue, same with the emotional zone, which is the lower eyebrows down to the nose. Yeah. And from the nose down to the chin, you, this area is quite wide for you. It's, it's both wide and it's long. So you've got a strong physical zone. In fact, three very good zones. So we take a look at the difference between uh, mental, emotional and physical to work out which area you enjoy the most. Yeah. So you have an ability to conceive an idea feel into it and put it into action. That's me. That's yeah. definitely you. Yeah. And because the physical zone is maybe slightly larger than the mental and emotional, just slightly, um, your approach is hands-on. Oh, my God, Linda, that is queen of practicality. I am absolutely, absolutely the queen of helping people to be really practical and get stuff done. Yep. Now, as I look at your nose, your nose is reasonably straight at the front, right at the top. Yeah. Um, so the area between the eyes, it's quite straight as it comes down and it gets a little bit larger down towards the bottom. Yeah. And it's got this beautiful circle. It's kind of, we call it a creativity ball that sits at the end of your nose. Yeah. And when, I, when you see someone who has like a little creativity ball, it's someone that's usually quite specific in something very specific. So the larger it gets, the more things in terms of the creative, um, physical creative arenas 
that you would normally be good at. Yeah. So we often find, you know, people that cook, um, no. maybe do paintings, art, interior design, um, photography, yeah. all of those different things. It's kind of like if I was to put my hands onto them, I could potentially be quite good. Sometimes it's music as well. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean that someone has to be good at all of those things but usually it will show up in terms of the creative nature of that person. Yeah. And do you know what, for me, how that showed, cooking, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, art, no. But I have really creative ideas and I do think outside the box. I know that the way I think about things, um, so I, I can 100% relate to that creativity element. The area that I see your creativity, Catherine, yeah. um, even in terms of some of the things that you do up for your clients, these yes. beautiful, beautiful yeah. end of yes. year processes, yes. which yes. are most, um, they're not just words. It's yes. the decoration of how you actually present yes. your images. So yes. all of that is part of that creative energy. Uh, that's really interesting because that is really important to me and it's about the the look, the feel, and the experience. Yeah. For me, it's not just about doing something. I don't like to do things with inside the box. I like to have things um, that, that feel good. Look, it's an experience. It's the, the feeling of it. Yeah. So that is that is that all that creative energy. And even as I look around you, you know, I can see you've got a candle on the side. Yes. You've got some beautiful pink and white carnations. Yes. I think yes. they're carnations. Yeah. Um, behind you, you've got some pillows yeah. and they're just beautiful. Yeah. Like everything yes. has a sense of the appreciation of beauty. Uh, do you know, oh, Linda, that's, um, that's interesting that you picked that up from my nose. Um, but I bought this pencil case and people, you might not um, see it. This was something that I bought. <laughs> in america and what it is um, for the listeners um, it just really resonated with me it's a canvas um, tote bag and it on it stamped on it is i'm going to make everything around me beautiful that will be my life and that was from elsie de wolf and that when i just have it i don't put anything in it because i don't want to dirty it but it's on my desk and it's a real essence that um I'm going to make that my life for everything to be beautiful. That is amazing. And you got that from my nose. How cool is that? From that? My nose. <laughs> and also you've got independence showing up as well because you're yes. very independent as well. Where do you see that? Where so that's also that? in the nose. It's in yeah. the high uh, nose bridge between the eyes. Yeah. So you've got a really beautiful balance, Catherine, between your masculine and feminine energies. Yeah. So even as I go to your eyebrows. Yes. Um, so if I was drawing your eyebrows, yeah. what I would notice is that they are made up of like a straight line to start with and they go upwards. So you've got this beautiful arch, yeah. but it kind of has more of an upward arch rather yes. than the Sydney Harbour Bridge arch. Yes, yes. But because it's straight at the start, you do really enjoy the scientific understanding, the logic where things have actually been, what, you know, what's the origin? Yes. Uh, where did it come from? How long has it been, been around? Yeah. So you've got that. The way that that would work for you with your clients, the gap between the eye and the eyebrow, there's a lot of empathy when I see such a big gap. So empathy is one of your, I think it's one of your trademarks. You are yeah. incredibly empathic. Yeah. But at the same time, the flat eyebrow is more solution-based. Yes. So, so if you had someone who's got a beautiful arch and they were married to someone who had straight, flat yeah, eyebrows straight, yeah. close to the eyes, you're looking at someone who is more solution-based. So we get to see how the styles of interactions go. Yeah. Yeah. And your eyebrows are quite thick as well. So yes. um, the thickness tells me of an amazing ability to multitask. And, of course, I already know that about yes, you. Yes, yes. But if I didn't know that about you, um, that would be one of the features that I would uh, take a look and notice. Your eyebrows also go past the end of your eye. 
quite significantly past yeah. the end. So rather than do 100%, um, at 100%, you possibly feel that um, you still haven't completely finished the project. So you're kind of going to do that extra 10%. Um, oh, my and God. Equally yeah. as enthusiastic at that last 10% as what you yes. are um, at the start. Although actually in saying that, the intensity of here is darker at the front. Yes. So your yeah. most favourite place is the creation and start of new projects. Oh, my God. This is just for, for the listeners. Um, I mean, Linda and I know, know each other, um, but the features that she is focusing on are describing me to a T. And for those of you who know me, you'll relate to those um, descriptions as well. It's beautiful, Linda, to hear your, um, your interpretation of my features. It's beautiful to hear that reflected back um, and to sort of get insight into what those features mean. And that, do you know what, we're just in this, um, this chat, we're just scraping the, the surface. Um, could, could I ask you just while we're here, and I know you've described it to me before, my left eyebrow, and I noticed this um, more because I'm doing a lot more video recordings, but it tends to go up a lot. Like when I'm thinking, there are points that I catch myself and it is my, and so when you're looking at me, it's my left eye. Yeah. And I sort of, um, I don't know if it's going to do it, but there's times when she seems to be quite independent, <laughs> that, that eyebrow. That eyebrow. Yeah. Well, you're very much, you operate a lot on the left-hand side, so in that creative space. Yes. But the eyebrows tend to go down closer to the eye when you're intellectually trying to um, understand something. Yes. So if you think about trying to focus, yes, the eyebrows come a little bit yeah. closer together, the eyebrows come down. Yes. yes. So when you're operating in the heart space and having kind of that quizzical, you know, like, oh, really? You know, it's like that open-hearted, yes. um, interesting, but you'll notice yourself even if you try to go into that space, yeah. the eyebrows, particularly with the inquiring mind, yeah. will go upwards. Yeah. So one of the things we say also, because again, I mentioned that you're, you've got a gap yes. between your eyebrow and your eye and that it's kind of flattish at the first segment, yeah. Yeah. but then it kind of has this little peak towards yeah. the end. Yes. So sometimes as a younger person, that peak can come around by the feeling of being judged by others. And what happens is as you get older, that judgment changes and we've heard already that you've that you had that internal judgment yes absolutely. um you know four or five years ago yeah. and that you've learned to actually let go of yeah. that yeah. but as an older person that that judgment turns into really amazing discernment and the ability to analyze and love, love that and that is like so much of the gifts that you offer as well oh gosh i love oh i Lucky I do have the timer set because we could just talk talk forever. And um, so for the listeners, Linda uh, is a face and body interpreter. And you can see from um, through the psychosomatic, so the, the mind and the body and how they interact. And you can see or hear from even just the descriptions. And this is really, um, we are just scraping the surface, but you can hear how much detail that we've got in probably 10 minutes of you spending time. And in reality, you would have actually summed all of that up in a very quick moment. Um, what, what are the things that sort of, what's the process, Linda? And I know that this is, you know, asking how long is a piece of string, but what are the things that you sort of look at first with someone? I look at the standout feature, but that's not the way we teach it. No. So you, when you first teach it, you basically go from the inside of the yes. face, yes. The, the actual face shape, which is like a blueprint of your personality. Yes. Then you go to the three zones. The yes. frame of mind is yes. the actual hairline. Oh, the yes. eyebrows are the distinction between your thoughts and emotions. Yeah. 
So when people don't have eyebrows, their thoughts and emotions can get a bit blurred. Can they draw eyebrows on? Is that a good thing? That's an amazing thing. Absolutely. To get some strength in that. Yeah. Yeah. But what happens when you become a more advanced reader is you see things, you see core issues at a glance. Yes. And with some people, um, because you're reading other features, you're actually learning how best to relate to another person. Yes. So as an example, if someone has flat eyebrows, high ears, and their eyebrow and eyes are close to each other, yeah. they're a fast thinker. Yes. So they want you to get to the point quickly. Yeah? yeah. So with them, I might be slightly different in my approach than if I am speaking with someone who's like really gentle, really soft, where I actually have to take the time, extra time, to build rapport. Yes. And I'll notice that I speak to them differently as well. We do it automatically. Like um, people are unaware sometimes at that ability to match another person. And for many people, it's an unconscious gift that they have. Yeah. But the nice way of looking at it is when someone has those softer features, you just got to take that time. So then I would start with them face shape frame of mind so that they actually get to know that I know what I'm doing rather than get getting to a core issue really quickly and the psychologists and people that are actually trained in other therapies they just love the face reading and the psychosomatics because for them if they're working with a client and the client says no if it's showing on their face particularly if it's an out of balance experience then the psychologist or the the therapist will know that the way that they have communicated has not been received in that way Yes. or there's an unconscious pattern um, that's presenting. So they know immediately that they need to find a different style of how to address the same issue, but in a different way. Yeah. Do you know, I love Linda. I, I love it in so many layers because for individuals, it's really great for them to get some insight into themselves Um, and for me when I was doing the study that was very much what it was about it was about getting insight into me and then what I've been able to do with it since is I use it in my practice of um, you know my coaching and mentoring and training but when I meet people it's I, I do what you do I'm certainly not I still want to be able to get inside your mind and you know, your depth of knowledge and, and just absorb that. But I use it as, you know, looking at the key features and getting some insight as to what might be going on for the person and how I can um, better relate with them. And I think what it does in my coaching is that it, I look at the features, it kind of matches up with what I'm intuitively feeling and it helps me maybe to... Um, ask some questions or to explore some areas that um, to go deeper. I can go deeper and quicker with my clients by getting that sense of what might be going on for them. And because sometimes when you, uh, and you would know this too, working with clients that they, they often tell you what they think you want to hear. Yes. Um, But this is just, uh, there was one client I remember, and I think it was um, not long after the, the training with you, And I just got a sense that there was something for her. And we had talked about um, the nostrils and taking in, um, you know, breathing in life. And there was a very different, and it's really interesting. There was a period of time that I really noticed people's nostrils, (laughs) Um, but there was a very distinct difference. And, And it just helped me to ask some questions. I didn't talk to her about her nostrils, but it helped me to ask some questions that really got us deep. Um, that I don't know I would have got to otherwise, if that makes sense. I completely understand that because sometimes the nostril is the one thing on a person's face that shows up as a personality completely yes. different yeah. to everything else. And the way that I sort of see it, um, the emotion that we often look at, um, it can be grief, but more common, it's going to be anger and frustration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And If people don't enjoy, and let's face it, no one particularly really enjoys being angry, but there's a certain personality type that will not tolerate anger. Yes. 
yeah and so that's where that shows up so the whole face shows up as someone who's kind and beautiful yes. and generous yes. and loving and all of a sudden you've got a feature that goes I am really angry yeah so as soon as I see that combination I know that the person rejects anger within themselves yes that was it I, I, I remember because this was a couple of years ago that was what was going on there was this conflict in my yeah was total, me total conflict. yeah there was my gut was telling me that there's something blocking, didn't quite know what it was, but the features were able to help me to kind of dive a bit deeper. I certainly yeah. don't think I remembered what you were just sharing there, but it was, it certainly helped me. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And, and for them to get to a stage where they can actually start to feel that as a frustration. Yes. Because it will often show up in an adult as more passive aggressive behaviors. Yes. And then they get upset because the outer world is not reflecting their true nature to them yeah um so that can be it can be so so profound yes and very subtle very very subtle um linda do you know what at that time i am literally have the timer on we have just um like i said we could talk forever and ever and ever about this how can people find you how can people because i know that our listeners are going to want to know more so maybe before how they can find or how they how they can find you but the types of things that you do in your business I know you've got a couple you've got training you've got personal consultations Tell us a bit yeah more. so in a personal consult consultation I either see people face to face usually in Sydney yes um, or online it works just as effectively online yeah. I get people to send in a photo front on straight not smiling yes and then I do the face splits in advance of the session yes. and then during the session they're able to look at the screen whilst I'm explaining what it is that I'm seeing yeah. so I introduce that about halfway through the session um I also do the full body sessions as well again do a little bit of that online it's very different from when it's been done face to face yes. yeah. but the things I'm looking for is um the body posture how the person's standing, what the knees are doing, the proportion of the body parts, yes. because that all tells part of their story. Yeah. Do a little bit of numerology in, included in that as well. Yeah. And then I teach face reading, which uh, I do both face-to-face -face and online, and the psychosomatic therapy. So the psychosomatic therapy is um, a recognised Australian government, recognised by the government yes. as an Australian qualification. Yes. Um, it is available to international people as well. And the last year we have spent a lot of time, myself and some of the other teachers in the college, putting part of that online so people can get half of their qualification and also become a certified face reader, hand reader, foot reader. Yeah. So we do the hands and feet as well. Um, you can s learn so much information through the yes. hands and feet. So we've just yes. touched on a small part. Yeah. But, yeah, so people can find me at um, www.thefaceandbodyinterpreter.com. And also, if you're looking for other practitioners in other areas, there is also an association. So um, INTAPT, I'm currently the president of INTAPT as well, www.intapt.com. Oh, that is just um, awesome. And that's where I met Linda. I had done my... Um, the introductory level, the certificate three in psychosomatic therapy. And then I went on to do my master's and Linda was the, one of the facilitators there. And just, you can already listeners from this chat, um, hear how much information she has and the insight that she can get. So I would highly recommend that you, um, that you catch up with Linda and we will be doing some bits and pieces together as well. So we're going to get some, um, like some workshops. So we'll have details of those. Um, so Linda, thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap for today. And I just am in as in awe of you now than I always am. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to catching up with you. So have a beautiful, beautiful day, Linda and hug and lots and lots of happiness to you Bye. and massive thanks to you Catherine too and it goes both ways absolutely love having you as a friend and colleague and yeah you're such an inspirational person so thanks for putting on these podcasts yeah thanks gorgeous see ya bye bye
Thank you.